Okay, I think we are about six or seven minutes after we've got a quorum and we have one more commissioner joining us momentarily. So I'm gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order. And um, do you wanna do roll call for the record? How are we gonna do the record tonight? How about we just say, let the record show everybody but uh, Commissioner Green and Commissioner um, Gonzalez are absent, Esther's absent along with Phil. Okay. Given that, um, we have a pretty straightforward agenda tonight. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. So we'll proceed with the agenda. Um, there is nobody officially in the public in the seats for the public, so I assume there are no comments from the public on non-agenda items, so we're gonna move straight to our hearing items. Um, item one is the formula business ordinance, and I'd like to thank Mr. Toy for joining us tonight. We had hoped to have, oh, there's some folks coming in. So we'd hope to have um, a, a more robust dialogue, and we have lots of questions for you, so thanks for joining us tonight on these issues. So Mr. Moore, do you wanna run us through the intro or Mr. Toy? Thanks. Hi. Come on in. This is the uh, special meeting of the Planning Commission. So there you go. Okay, so obviously the Planning Commissioners and the Planning Commission are pretty familiar with this item, but for the viewing audience at home and for our members of the audience, I'll just do a quick staff report on this item. So uh, back in August, uh, the town council actually adopted an urgency ordinance uh, and imposed a 45 day moratorium on what we refer to as formerly based businesses. Uh, so in the highway commercial CH zone, uh, nobody would be able to submit an application for what be termed a formerly based business during the moratorium period. In September, the council extended that moratorium for another 10 months, 15 days, or the earlier of when formula based language dealing with formula based businesses could be, I guess the zoning ordinance governing that, the CH zone, that language could be modified to include those provisions to allow for a formula based business. And so this item that came to the planning commission was based on council direction to do two things. One, to add formula based business language into the CH zone, which doesn't exist, and to modify the existing formula based language in what we refer to as the CC or central commercial zone. And so you would have the language in two zoning districts, uh, so it'd be consistent in both. The concept being for the council was that the council indicated that they needed to have a workshop to talk about the conversion of CH zone to CC, which is listed in the general plan, but there's a variety of issues that they said they needed to discuss and so that's why the moratorium is in place until they can have that discussion. Then presumably after they have that workshop and discussion, then they might move forward with converting, uh, the C rezoning the CH properties into CC. So uh, I guess one of the issues was if the council did not um, approve any language or formula based changes into the CH zone, then no business could submit an application until CH was converted into CC, which means really the downside is if you had a business like Daily Method that would technically be considered a formula based business, it could not submit an application. So perhaps the town would lose an opportunity to build vacant spaces or bring a business to town that otherwise could happen sooner. Otherwise, they would just have to wait until um, the council ultimately rezoned the CH property to CC. So it's somewhat gets a little confusing, I think, maybe for the audience or the viewing audience at home, but I think the game plan, again, for the council was, if we do this, then the moratorium can be lifted in the CH zone, and then that would just help cover it while they go and debate the issues related to uh, converting CH to CC, and ultimately everything would be converted to CC, and it would go away. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. But I understand the Planning Commission had some additional questions related to that, the Council's approach. Yeah, so I just, just to kick it off, I think one of the, 
I mean, the first question and what we've talked about trying to understand better is just generally what what are the milestones and what's the what is the approach that either you as staff or the council is looking at um, when when we say yeah the critical path when we're talking about the next steps being a workshop is that scheduled what's the timeline so I think we were we were looking at this and trying to figure out we're being asked to take an action that ultimately has an effect on the general plan and and maybe what or what or what doesn't happen with it there's been a lot of discussion related to um, all these various topics and while we did there was a workshop sort of on the variances and the errors and omissions um, section sort of what what are the other steps with respect to the next to, to laying out this whole process to get us to a point where we can honestly say in our whereases and in our endorsements that this complies with the general plan that the town unanimously unanimously the planning commission and the town council unanimously adopted so i guess those were as a starting point if you could give us sort of the milestones or the critical path from your view right so the next step the council agreed to was to ha have a workshop to discuss the issues raised related to land use issues uh, in the CH, the conversion of CH to CC. I, I think as some background, may I recall, the council did take action to rezone those properties per the general plan. It was subjected to a referendum, and ultimately the council rescinded the ordinance to rezone the properties. And one of the actions we said we would do is we go back and have a workshop. And so that workshop hasn't been scheduled yet, but the council did commit to have that the early part of next year. So it's really staff, probably in December, we would go to the council and say, okay, when's a good day to have this workshop? Because they would have their calendars and we could have that discussion. And so the game plan's always been, there's a certain number of issues they need to discuss anyway from a policy perspective related to that. And it could take more than workshop, one, more than one workshop, but they definitely would have one in the early part of the year. Based on that, we'd be able to figure out if another one's needed or perhaps at that time the direction would be go ahead and go back through the planning commission with that zoning action and take it back to council. But that's currently the time frame. And, and sort of on that line, and this is just something that I was trying to figure out, was there ever any, ever any discussion of actually just having a new section to, in the zoning ordinance that was specific to formula businesses rather than making title two to the CH zone, which is being what's being proposed here, and modifying Title II of the CC zone, was there ever any discussion of just having a formula business ordinance that applies to any commercial districts? Um, the reason I'm asking that is you have commercial service CS district, which is that a concern from the town's perspective? So we keep hearing that formula business is a concern, um, but is there a reason to make it specific to CH and then revise CC? And is it in actually better standing for the town code, at least structurally, mm -hmm. to have a formula business ordinance that would apply to any of the commercial districts within the, the yeah. And it, and it turns out that we have a named formula business in the CS district, and I'm not saying we shouldn't, I'm just asking the question whether that was debated. Actually, the council did not have that discussion, although there is, what, one parcel property zone CS? And what if it came in to be a Lowe's or a Home Depot? Um, it already has a name that you are used to hearing on national uh, commercials. So, so, so I, I ask that because is that something that we would want to not so so we are saying that we don't want to have formula businesses in our commercial district unless it's in the ca cs district at this point previously what our town code said is formula businesses are not allowed in the cc but we were silent on the ch district the dialogue and the debate that's been brought up between merging cc and ch is completely tied to housing and there's a band-aid that's been proposed to put um, formula business on CH, but it doesn't address any of the concerns that were raised. I'm simply asking, would it meet the town's interests to have a formula business zone or formula business ordinance specific to any of the commercial districts? 
and is that actually in better keeping with the general plan um, as we look at it and look forward to some of these other debates that are out there? We can do that. We didn't really have that discussion. Uh, there is that one property. It doesn't seem it would apply to any other properties. But yes, actually, we did discuss it with the town attorney. The town attorney discussed it with staff. At this point, we can do that. Um, I think we just didn't because it was easier to do it the way we were proposing to do it. But yes, we could have an ordinance that basically says no formula based business anywhere in town. Of course, it's not allowed in residential anyway, but you could do it just in case you want to cover it. So yes, that, that is an option. Yeah, and I know really what I was trying to get to was, is, is the concern formula-based businesses in town? And if that's the issue, then it seems like, in, instead of having language that's formula-based business not in CC, and then another place where it says not in CH, are we missing CS? I don't know. Um, and it sort of introduces that question to me of should we, should we be thinking about that as well? Yeah. Hey, actually, the interesting thing is if we wanted to include CH, we could just add that. I think those are the only CS, sorry. Um, we could just add that to, to the ordinance. The one caveat is with the one property zone commercial recreation, um, we can't change anything relative to that site without going back to the voters. And then the only other C commercial district is the limited commercial. And off the top of my head, without having the benefit of the book tonight, I can't speak comprehensively about what's said by right and not in the CL. Could we um, recommend adoption of the language for the CC and then in, no, in the CC? and then suggest that the council consider this when they make their final decision or have some sort of language around that we would like to, that's not a formal whatever, um, that recommends that if their intention that says, if their intention is indeed to put formula business restrictions throughout the entire commercial part of our town zone, that they ought to not piecemeal it and include and, and, and do it in that way in comprehensively. Your role is advisory, so it's up to you. And, and, and I guess what I was looking at is, okay, so we have a section in 17096, then we have a section in 17100, and then, right. then next year somebody wants to clarify language on formula business further, and then we have to change it in both. So. It right. seems that through all the dialogue through the general plan, that's been a tenant of this town is the formula business has been a concern. I mean, frankly, bringing up the question of daily method, even though it was in the CH district because the general plan talked about CC, that rezoning, we that was part of the findings was looking at the formula business questions and there was a finding that, you know, there was some specific about this one operation because I don't remember the finding off the top of my head, but we actually did have findings specific to that operation because eventually it, we, we wanted to make sure that it conformed either way. I, I guess that was kind of the, the open question. Um, and I, I actually have no problem refining this, the language, the formula business language to make it more clear. I think that's an important thing. There's nothing wrong with that, but are we going to then have it in th two, three, four different places in the future? And if it's a tenant of the town, does it make sense to have it as its own standalone ordinance? I would agree with that. I mean, I think one of the main conversations we had last time was not piecemealing it. And I think what we've seen over this past year is the impact of piecemealing things where you think you've changed it in one place, but you've forgotten to change it in another place. And oh gosh, there's a big problem. So I think it behooves us to not replicate that um, issue by creating duplicative, you know, that, that came, comes about when you have duplicative language in a bunch of different places in documents. And so I do think that we did talk about not piecemealing it and not creating the potential for future errors by having duplicative language that's meant to be consistent that may, as you say in the future, somebody might not remember to put the comma in the second place where they put it 
in the first place. So I, I completely agree. I believe that the intention of the town is to expand the application of the formula business uh, regulations throughout the entire town. In fact, I think this came up because there were people who already thought it was. There was, I mean, the whole reason why we're talking about this is people thought it was throughout the entire town of Fairfax and were surprised during this process to find out that, oh no, it was only applicable to a certain portion of our town. So I do believe that it is consistent with why we're here doing this and what the intention is to expand it throughout the town. And I think it's great that you caught that because we were just looking at CH and CC and to say, oh yeah, but what about CS and CL and whatever else that we can. So I would support that. And if we can do it tonight, great. And if we need to not do it tonight, So take. how about this? What if you were to, I mean, it seems to me these are not mutually exclusive actions. You could go forward with what's before you tonight and parallel to that, recommend that the town council consider what you've said about applying it in a more generic fashion to all CC commercial zones or at the whole town in a separate section and, and give that advisory at the same time that you make a decision on this piece of it with the caveat about the commercial recreation. Yes, and if we were to approve it as it's stated, we would be approving going forward with this duplicative language issue, which I think is what we had some issues with. So I could see approving the language itself in the CC district maybe, because that's where it already exists with your recommendations. I personally wouldn't want to also approve it in the CH and create that duplication. But I could see, I don't have any problem with the language that's been recommended. The improved and updated language that's been recommended, I personally, there's a few little, there's one little question, but other than that, the improved language, I think we can move forward. With. So, so what about this? Why don't you, uh, why don't you go with that? If you're all of like minds, say you're happy with the language, you just think it should be applied, applied townwide to the extent it can be. But well, they also have the prerogative to d make the decision. Right. I guess the question is, would it, if if it's proposed as a resolution. We're, we're, we're resolving to um, approve a draft ordinance that's been presented tonight. Recommend. Or recommend a draft ordinance and pre that's been presented tonight. And I think if, if there was an interest in, in having modifications that basically says we would recommend that we would actually propose a new, you know, 17140, a new chapter in the town code that would be a formula business ordinance to be applied to you know commercial zones as the town council sees fit and that it would be um, we could write the language and drop cc and ch and just say commercial zone you know kind of have a placeholder for the town council because it seems to me that that's a recommendation that has merit as opposed to saying yes we've we've we we're okay and we're recommending this draft ordinance with our resolution that has a lot of different wording that doesn't actually present what we've talked about. So I don't know how do we get to um, how do we get to something that's actually a, a viable how, how about this idea? I think we have the idea that the planning commission's recommendation would be you're fine with the language related to formula business standards, but you like it to be applied to all the commercial zones. So other than time, maybe what we do is uh, in your November meeting, we just come back with a resolution that says that. We just come back with a new ordinance that addresses it that way. Um, and then we have it all at once, and then we'll just go to the council in January, and that would be it. And, and I think part of the what, what we didn't know the last time we had these discussions is what's the urgency, what's the concern, and is there time to have a dialogue and try to figure these things out? So it, it sounds like if, if, if we could, would we, procedurally, we'd have to vote to direct staff? Is that, do we vote on that or we just give you guidance to, to continue it? We'd vote to continue with guidance of. Continue to your November like to meeting based on your comments to, okay. to come back with a, basically an ordinance that's all encompassing of all the commercial zones. And, and I think we, I'm very comfortable saying that applies to the commercial zones as town council deems appropriate. And then we can, whether they name them, whether whatever it is, I think it's more of getting to a standalone, 
however if if we decide if the town council doesn't want to apply this to the commercial service area that's that's their decision or, or CL though to me that that's a I'm comfortable with with that but I think it's trying to resolve streamline and get a standard language right. yeah. and, um, and I think I think that's I think that's a great approach as well because I think what it does is it separates the content of what's being updated the language in terms of the formula business language from where it's being applied so that the discussion because as we know people show up when it goes in front of the town council and that way the discussion that will be had with the public who may want to comment is going to be about the formula business regulation language separate from where it's applied. I mean, there may be a component to it where they talk about where it's applied, but it's not just C H and C C. It's really going to be focused around the language and whether or not it should be applied throughout the town or not. So I, I, I think that's a great approach. Yeah, I think this is a really nice, clean way to kind of nail down the intent of the ordinance and apply it evenly where it needs to be applied without our skepticism on process um, and just and just do what we, we think is the best thing to simplify the language, clarify the code, apply it the way the town intends to apply it, however the council chooses to. Um, I think it's a, it's a, a really nice clean way to bring it about thank you okay yeah I think if because I, I do think if we're in in the interest of continuing I think we I'm happy to entertain that motion but I do think I would like to say at least in the resolution and I think what we've discussed is really around the ordinance and the language that would go into the ordinance I, I think the the added whereas I appreciate. Um, I think it meets kind of addresses what we were talked about at the last meeting. I think, given this discussion, I think it would be appropriate to add another whereas. It says um, formula business. The formula business ordinance has been a central tenet of the town of Fairfax. Um, you know, for I guess we could find the date if we wanted to, um, yeah. and that you know by this. Rec recommendation it, it streamlines and makes it a, a standing ordinance rather than tied to any specific streamlines and strengthens yes there we go so there's some language to play with for a and that extra whereas um, okay. streamlines and strengthens the town's commitment to this provision I did have a question just a technical question on the language might as well get it out of the way so that we don't have to have um, um, there's a sentence uh, at the end line 79 and line 73 that referred to a date April I'm sorry there's a couple of lines that refer to a date of April 1st 2000 which I believe was the date of the original formula business regulation and I don't I don't if that I was confused because when it was kind of cut and pasted into the CH zone I wasn't sure if that date is still applicable in another zone or if it was only a date that should be referred to in the original zone in which it was I don't know I, I just had a question about whether uh, it talks about let me just read it, it says uh, this this shall include but not be limited to any retail sales service visitor accommodation wholesale blah 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 that was not in business within the Fairfax blah zone prior to April 1st 2000 so that was originally in the CC zone that said prior to within the Fairfax CC zone prior to April 1st 2000 I don't know if we can extend that if we're extending it into other zones I'm just putting that out as a legal question. You don't have to answer it right now, but it's something, it's an element to consider when you're expanding this to other zones. Yeah, whether it's still applicable. And then the only other question I had was on item number F. Uh, there's the list of the conditions that have to be met. And item number F says, 
all applicable general plan goals, objectives, policies, and programs. Um, that's fairly comprehensive, and maybe it's intended to be so. I don't know. It's fairly comprehensive. It basically means that the proposed formula business or restaurant needs to meet every single provision in the general plan. If that's what's intended, okay. It's a pretty high bar, so I just had a question. You're right. It, it, in that sentence, it says, with, uh, be consistent with all applicable general plan goals, objectives, policies, and programs. So I guess it's up to that business to decide, or up to the town council, or up to us to decide what's applicable and what's not. Um, and do we want that to be open-ended, or do we want to? I mean, I don't know how we can refine it further than understanding what's applicable to a business that's applying to come into town so I think a, I think applicable gives it the flexibility that it would need um, you could drop all but you'd still have to say applicable laws and policy because you couldn't ever say you can't say all I think you could just drop the all and say applicable um, or, or keep it at all applicable I think either way it and then get rid of the quotes work. at the end mm -hmm. um, and and I would just throw out if there is dial or debate about what date we should use especially if it's going to apply more than just the CC it seems like the date of the general plan being passed might be a reasonable date whenever I think that was in 2010 um, so that seems like a if, if you need to peg another date that might be more applicable that would be one I would think of all right so is there um, a motion to continue with the recommendations for staff to bring this back to our November meeting as, re as revised? Sure. I'd make a motion to continue item number one to our November meeting with the direction to staff to modify the uh, resolution 1413 as we've discussed to, um, as we've discussed. Uh, in other words, that the, uh, the therefore uh, recommendation from the Planning Commission would be revised that we recommend adoption of the updated and improved formula business regulation language and that we recommend that it be applied throughout the commercial districts throughout town as the council sees fit to designate and to add in the resolution a an additional whereas that says whereas the formula business regulation whereas Fairfax's formula business regulation has been a central tenant of the town for many years and this resolution seeks to streamline and strengthen that provision in our code and I'm sure you'll be able to streamline that for the minutes <laughs> sorry <laughs> is there a second I'll second all in favor say aye. aye aye any opposed none opposed I would like to take a brief moment to thank the San Francisco Giants for number one <laughs> winning the World Series but making Tuesday night so unbearable that there was plenty of time to read through all the ordinances <laughs> and figure out maybe that there was a new and different way to approach it all right um, I can only say that because they won last night. Yeah. <laughs> All right, item two tonight is um, on our sign ordinance, so I think we're ready for a report on that one. Sure. As background in August, uh, the council discussed revisions to the sign ordinance, and the main revision was they noticed that there's a restriction on political signs, a 30-day restriction. And given in kind of how it works nowadays, it's mainly mail, a lot of mail-in ballots, absentee ballots. They thought it'd be appropriate to extend that to 60 days. However, the town attorney indicated to the council that that provision of the code is actually illegal. Uh, you can't prohibit political signs, but you can wrap them into a category that we refer to as non-commercial signs. And so what's before you was, try, was a way to modify the sign ordinance without changing everything, but address the issue of non-commercial signs. 
and specifically temporary non-commercial signs. So the goal was just create a category that allows temporary non-commercial signs for I think we did 67 days total without having to have a permit. But the goal was still if it exceeded the size limitations per the size ordinance it would need a permit and if it was a permanent commercial sign it would still need a permit but just cover the issue of temporary non-commercial signs. Now it was pointed out to us that perhaps there's an issue related to I think what was the issue related to some type of signage I think referred to as oh reasonable temporary commercial signs uh, there's there is sections of the ordinance that does cover that ex currently however it may not be comprehensive it may need some work but our goal was just to cover the non temporary non commercial signs and so that's really the background for all this Originally, it started as we were just going to change 30 to 60 and be done. Turns out it's a little more complicated than that. So, and just to summarize, I think as, as we reviewed this last month, because it did come to us last month, one of the questions that came up, and I, again, as I was trying to back through, I think the one thing that sticks out is I think what's been described makes sense in it's under section 17064.30 um, and and really what it does is it takes the the political sign section and in order to make it non-commercial so it's temporary non-commercial it takes political signs holiday as far as I can tell and temporary posters takes all three of those former sections combines them into one under temporary non-commercial um, the the thing that caught my eye and it came up last time is that then in this in the design criteria uh, modifications that are added when it comes to all non uh, section two so it's it's what's proposed under 17064140 design criteria all of section two is new language and it's specific to all non commercial science must conform with the following criteria. Um, it says it must meet the requirements for security and stability, but then it has one about lighting shall be installed so as not to cause a glare. And I think it raised the question of are we by automatically without any permit or review authorizing lighting for temporary signs? And it just seemed to make no sense that it, it seemed like that's what we actually were building was all this authorization for new lighting of signs that might be up for 60 days. and. I don't know if that was the intent or not, but I think that was one of the questions we wanted to understand better. I think what we were what we were trying to address is there was a lighting section before under, I think it's holiday lighting. Mm -hmm. The thought pattern was since it's all combined in one section, that type of lighting would be installed. So now it's to cause glare or whatever. We didn't really think about a temporary non-commercial sign actually having lighting on it, which I could see it's not particularly clear whether that could be the case or not. Although previously, how this was written, I suppose that could have been the case anyway because it wasn't addressing that specifically. Yeah, I think the problem is that 17140 didn't didn't have a section on temporary non. It, it didn't have a non-commercial. It just said what 1764140 says right now is all signs must conform to the following criteria. And now we're breaking out commercial signs and non-commercial signs. We haven't. We we've now newly defined temporary non-commercial, but in our definitions, there's no. We don't have a definition for non-commercial or temporary. So I, you know, maybe it's just we need to get a definition. But um. we don't. We don't necessarily think you need to have a definition. I think it covers it well enough in terms of temporary non-commercial signs. Although previously it wasn't particularly clear whether or not a temporary sign could be lit. So I could see how there's some confusion related to that. If my memory serves, when we talked about this last time, we actually changed the language to say if lighting shall be installed, it should be done so as to so as not to co cause glare. Blah 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 blah. That's what we. I, I think we even discussed it last time because it's not. I don't think the intention is to say that all signs have to have lighting. It was meant to say that if they are going to have lighting they ought to be installed this way. So um, 
item number F and item number B are changed to say if lighting shall be installed, it should be done so as not to cause glare to passing pedestrians or motorists. I believe that was the intention. Yeah, and I, I guess, again, where we started is that the, we've, we've lost our audience. Can't believe it. Um, where we started, if we serve dinner here, we might keep them, but um, um, we started with, this section is simply design criteria. All signs must conform to the following criteria. Now we're now we're actually being more specific. We're now saying all commercial signs must conform to this criteria A through F, and all non-commercial signs, you only have to follow two criteria. So I, I guess we're creating a new, is it temporary? It doesn't say temporary non-commercial, it just says non-commercial, which could I, be permanent. Right. Well, so I, was, I guess that's what I was trying to understand. Okay. So, so one of the things that I was thinking is there is inconsistency in how this class of signage is labeled throughout here. In the very beginning in section 17.064030E, the term temporary non-commercial signs is used, but then in other places only non-commercial signs are used. I would suggest that everywhere should be said temporary non-commercial signs, because I believe that the intention is not to create a separate class of signage that is permanent non-commercial. Permanent, anything permanent, whether it's commercial or non-commercial, gets applied the same way. The permanent signs have to go through the same permitting process, the same design criteria, everything. The issue is, what we're trying to get at is temporary and non-commercial, not or, but an and, that it has to be both of those. If it's temporary and non-commercial, then there's this new application, which I think would work if you look at the design criteria you don't need to have it be architecturally a part of a building or color and material compatible with a wall or you know that if you if you look at item number two in the design criteria um, the the ones that are not applied don't make sense to be applied because they're temporary as long as you're talking about non-commercial temporary signs so I think I would suggest that we that you just uniformly go through here and make sure that anywhere it says non-commercial signs, you add the word temporary in there. And that would clarify it, I think. I'm sorry. So we, we, add. Don't, we don't have a category of not permanent non-commercial, do we? Uh, no, because permanent non-commercial would require a permit anyway. So... So I think she's just suggesting that we do a search and replace for non-commercial, add a temporary in front of it. So temporary temporary and permanent non-commercial? Temporary non-commercial signs. That's the term right. that is used throughout. So you only have the word t temporary non-commercial signs. There's okay. nothing that says commercial signs only. Or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, except that. Some temporary non-commercial signs may actually be subject to the design criteria because it exceeds a size limit. Or, and actually, when I think about this, when I did talk to the attorney, the lighting was just continued language from what's in there now. And she just wanted to have a provision that temporary or permanent doesn't matter, installed in a safe manner. And so having under design saying all, oh, non-commercial, it, it applies whether why, it's... Why don't you just say all signs? I mean, what's the, what's the designation? It's almost like, we, why, why wouldn't we just go back to what was in originally, which doesn't have a section B. It only has a section A for the design criteria. It has all those elements, and it just says that all signs, all signs have to conform, have to meet that design criteria. Except some of the signs aren't some of the sections don't apply. But they don't apply to temporary signs. Doesn't matter whether they're commercial or not. The issue right. is that they're not applicable because the signs are temporary, not because they're commercial or not commercial. So, oh, I see. So you just want, so you would prefer just to say all signs because the belief is then the temporary non-commercials wouldn't need a permit. So this wouldn't apply. Uh, although the odd, I, I guess the, 
the, the town attorneys, uh, the reason for adding the section B, or two, I should say, is because they wanted to ensure all these signs are designed and installed in a manner to adequate security and stabilization. Although I see what you're saying. E maybe, says the same thing. E yeah. says the exact, I mean, A and B are just duplicates of E and F. So, so instead of what, uh, what I'm thinking is that it just to simplify it, and you know, I, I could say for, I, I think calling out all whether it's temporary, non-commercial, or just all non-commercial, it just we're parsing it out to the point where why why do we have a different requirement for something Sorry. that's temporary or not? It's all signs in Fairfax would have to meet these, and then then we're not sending the impl that sending the implied permission to put lighting on a temporary sign, but if they do, now it's clear that they have to be safe and stable. Um, but when I look at what we have right now in the code, it says all signs must conform to the following criteria. It, and it doesn't matter what sign we're talking about, and what's been proposed here is simply to add, to clarify the stability, or the, the safe and stable, and and F is the, the lighting. But Brennan, it's also to exempt temporary signs from having, so if you said all signs and I have a poster board zip tied to a fence, it can't be architecturally part of the design of a building. It can't have materials that are compatible with the color of the wall. It can't, so it, 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 it just, it would be silly to require that temporary zip tied banner to meet items C and D. So what have we done for the last 20 years? Well, because this is the language what we've, we've had there, and we've, we've, we've had ignored, these We've ignored it. Yeah, but I, but I, I guess we're, we're actually creating a new loophole instead of just maintaining. <laughs> Garish I, I, and I would say, crazy. I, I, I would say the town attorney believes this is more enforceable than it was previously. I understand, let's see, I'm, I'm wondering if you went back and said all signs, and then maybe we take the issue of the non-commercial signs, since it really, we, we take out all commercial, we keep it all signs, and then the part for number two, we just wrap that into the temporary signs related to safe and uh, manner or whatever, and we address it that way and put it back in another section, and then it wouldn't be in this section. I mean, I'm, I, I, I don't want to, I, I was looking at it as, and whether design criteria creates a loophole, probably not, it's just design criteria, so it's after the fact, so maybe it's, it's less of an issue. I, I'm comfortable with, if we differentiate temporary and we just have two conditions for temporary signs and we have six conditions for permanent, permanent sign, I mean, right now all commercial, it sort of seems to leave out all the, there seems to be things that are being left out. <laughs> the way we've parsed it. So maybe if it's all signs for, for section one and section two is just temporary non-commercial. So section one would be all permanent signs and section two would be all temporary signs. Perfect. And yeah, it's, it's not it. the issue of commercial or not commercial, it's the issue of temporary or permanent. Yeah. yeah. So. I think that that way we're covered if it's permanent. There's a design criteria for any of the signs regardless of what it's for. So if it's temp temporary, there's... It's so temporary is only going to be 67 days. So if yeah. I'm a new business going in and I have a sign, I have to take down my cafe no. sign within 67 days. No, I mean, that would be There's actually the specific conditions in here for new businesses. But that's... But that... that just in the design criteria. You can have temporary throughout. banners. You can have free, all kinds of banners. Signs require it. It may require a permit, but you could still, you can still do it. Temporary, yeah, 176440. Temporary business identification signs. You can get a permit and keep it up for as long as you need it. So. I think now we do. I think we were, I guess I felt like we were leaving a lot of things out that would not have any design criteria, and I think this gets at it. Permanent, temporary, and then there's design criteria for both. That works for me. I would just, again, reiterate though, there are other edits further on where you use the word 
non-commercial signs and I would just say go through and replace anywhere where it just says non-commercial with the phrase temporary non-commercial. So my everyone up here is saying don't distinguish between commercial and non-commercial, just make all of the distinction between temporary and permanent. Is there a reason for distinguishing between commercial and non-commercial? Well, this, this allows for um, temporary posters for public activities or events, which could be concerts, so it's not just political. I, I mean, holiday lighting, obviously there's different things there. It still allows you to put up a temporary sign for whatever, yeah. as long a, as it's temporary and I, comes down in 67 uh, days. It could be political, it could be my summer camp, which is commercial, it could be Little League, it could be... But, but I do think what's important, it's not just temporary, because it's there is a section that's temporary window signs announcing specials. So, mm -hmm. so I think what we've done through this, what's being proposed is to take political signs, holiday lights and displays, and temporary posters announcing public activities or events, and made it something that falls under the label temporary non-commercial. And that's what the new section E is. It's bringing all three of those different definitions together. And then in the rest of the drafting, section four that's in this um, draft ordinance, throws out this new term, non-commercial signs, which isn't represented by anything that's been previously defined. It's now it's, so if, if we want it to apply to this new group of signs that we just created, then under section four, it should say temporary non-commercial. Um, and I'm saying section four of the ordinance 785. And that's where I guess I have notes written. I'm looking at an old, I'm looking at last month, so did they? So the it? staff report here? No, oh, I, I changed. I have, let me look at the new one. No, no, I'm looking at the new one. It has no section, it four. section four. Just missed it? <laughs> it's, it's good that I had the last old month one. that was making a change to another section. Hey, this is, um, this is a good conversation. You really gotten into the woods on the particulars, even beyond what we were attempting to accomplish here. I personally have not taken the time to wrap my head around this because it was, it was something that was coming from above. And I think that you brought up some good issues. And if Garrett's okay with it, I'd say let's continue this and then take your comments under consideration with the town attorney and come back with some recommended revisions to address your concerns. Because I think you brought up a lot of good things and it's really hard to right here, right now, without legal advice, address, because it's not what we know or we don't know, it's what we don't know, we don't know about the particulars on this thing. So if that's okay, the election's over, the, you know, by the time we get this thing up to council anyway, and this was motivated by election signs, so we've got a little breathing room, perhaps we could continue this one also. And I think what would be helpful is, I think I just need to send you the information I have from the attorney related to some of the questions you've asked, because we've asked the same questions. And for some of the answers, it, it did have to do with making sure non-commercial signs are treated the same way as commercial signs. And so that's why some of the language is, is in there. Um, but that being said, I think there's some additional questions we could ask, and I think if we just put it all in writing, send it out to you, and then maybe perhaps I can answer your questions, and if not, it'll definitely stimulate more questions and get answers to that, and then we'll bring it back to you. Hopefully, we'll have addressed most of those issues. And, and we can have one-way dialogues with each of you without violating the Brown Act in the serial meeting. So what I, what I do want to, so, so a question then, then is, we don't have definitions for commercial, non-commercial, temporary. So, so perhaps if there were definitions for those three things, this wouldn't really be a very difficult discussion. If the decision is we don't need definitions, then 
if there's an issue between whether it's commercial and non-commercial, but we've never defined those two things, and the only thing we have is this new section E that's calling something temporary non-commercial, that's becoming the de facto definition. So I, I do think it's it's important. The other thing that we just noticed up here is in this packet for this month, the draft Exhibit B for Ordinance 785 doesn't have Section 4. If you look at last month's Exhibit B, the draft Ordinance 785, it has Section 4 and it's a whole revision to subdivision B of Section 1764070. So, our so packet's missing our a whole bunch of stuff. Doesn't have if you look at the exhibit B section. Look, look at exhibit B at the, the bottom. It says section three. You flip the page over. It says section five. So that's part another reason why I was confusing everyone is because I was looking at last month's <laughs> draft. So I, and it wasn't intentional. I mean, it seems to be missing because it didn't renumber the sections. Either that or based on some of the corrections, there wasn't a section five, it was supposed to be section four. Well, the, yeah. Because we, we did, what we noticed last time in the red line, there were some things incorrect, and so No, section it. five is section five from last time, too. There oh, is, is a, it? There is a section four that's completely different that's not in our packet. Oh, huh. it is missing a section four. Not too sure versions we're looking at. All right, fair enough. Okay, so, so I think we we have direction and yeah. I do, interesting enough for the questions mentioned related to definitions, we did have that discussion and was determined that definitions weren't required for a variety of, of reasons and it wouldn't necessarily provide that much clarity if there was an issue. But that being said, I think you do need answers to your questions and then we'll answer them the best we can, get it to you ahead of time and then, obviously, if you have more questions, we can answer that, and then we can discuss this at the next meeting. It, yeah. Like Jim said, it's not pressing at this moment. And, and I appreciate that. I think in the, in the red lines that's in the packet that is this month's packet, it does have the change to the section that is missing in the ordinance. So I don't think it was purposefully taken out. I think it, it's just missing. And, and again, I, I hate to harp on definitions. I'm fine not having definitions, but if we're referencing things and we're using this, we need to either use the same term regularly throughout or or define it and use it differently, so. We'll get you uh, a legal reasoning why not if that's their position. Yeah. And, and having done this now for almost eight years, this is, again. to me, the fun stuff and it's interesting, um, but there's, we also want to endeavor to get these done in one session instead of making them three sessions. This is bringing back bad memories of about seven <laughs> years ago where we'd go eight sessions on one ordinance. And I think there's a happy medium where it's, we can ask questions, get answers, and, and do it in the most streamlined way, so. Cause, you know. I know it's not easy to stay on top of your packets when we all have busy lives, but to the extent we can get questions ahead of time, it always helps too. Again, thank you, Giants, for giving me the time. All right, um, so I think, do we have anything else on the, oh yeah, we need a motion to continue this one to the next off calendar. So we need to have a motion to continue this. I'll make a motion to continue um, the adoption of resolution regarding signs, the ordinance number 785. Um, do we need any more language than that? I would just continue the sign ordinance discussion. I second. So we have a motion and a second to continue pending further review and updates. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Um, the next item on our agenda is um, planning director's report. I don't know if you have something tonight or not. I do. I just okay. want to um, mention that next week at town council meeting, um, there's a couple items on the agenda um, from my desk, which is renewing um, Mr. Kenning's contract as uh, our contract planner. And um, uh, there's been some comments along the way during the recent kerfuffle about consultants and whatnot, and that's going to be on the agenda for renewing his um, his contract. And part of that contract would be doing the next housing element update. 
um, and that gets me to the second report on the agenda, which is reporting about um, uh, having uh, aired a strategy for meeting the next RENA from 2015 to 2023. There's a report. It'll be on the web tomorrow night, um, as usual. And um, I actually took a strategy for meeting that 61 to the Affordable Housing Committee in September and got tacit support and took it to the General Plan Implementation Committee in October and received tacit report. And if we get the go-ahead um, to meet this fast-track schedule that HCD, the De State Department of Housing and Community Development, has put together to make the exercise less onerous with all the analysis and background data collection, um, then we will be moving full steam ahead to meet the January 31st, 2015 deadline where, whereas we get where we would get a guaranteed turnaround of two months from HCD, which allows us some time before the actual deadline for the next cycle five arena of May 31st. So stay tuned. We'll see if we get um, direction from council to keep moving on that. It would save the town. Um, it's about a $30,000 exercise to update it between now and and January with the sub consultant under Mr. Kenning's contract. And um, if we don't make that deadline and we have to do it after May 31st, then we have the long form way to go and probably adds at least another $30,000 in the exercise. And of course, this is assuming that there's any desire to meet the next arena, which um, stay tuned, it'll be interesting. And then lastly, Garrett has um, an item on there which is reporting to council about the second of the forums held on the general plan and housing element. If you recall, the first one in July was on sort of the over big picture overview. What was what were the last two arenas of cycle three and four and how we met them. And then the more recent um, forum uh, in September was on the two opportunity sites of Tenolima and School Street Plaza. And that's what Garrett will be reporting on. And um, also in that report are recommendations going forward, which include the CH to CC, and also um, a recommendation from the GPIC on uh, holding a traffic forum, because at each of the first two forums, and also at public comments before council, we've heard a lot of um, frustration and consternation about the existing conditions of town with traffic. And um, Bruce Ackerman on the GPIC, um, who's sort of shepherding this idea of a f uh, traffic forum, is as uh, adroitly pointed out that you know we've had modest growth in this town in the last 20 years but we've had incredible increase in traffic so why is that where is it coming from what what prompts that so stay tuned we hope to get license on wednesday night for that too um is there anything else in that report that's germane it's going to the council first yeah it's going to council but i mean just the highlights that you might want to stay tuned to to what's going i don't want to get in front of so it's like the the teaser for the 11 o'clock news it's yeah there you go tune in <laughs> yeah, so that and that's uh oh and if we get um license to move forward with the next housing element update then the agenda for november 20th with you folks is fortunately looking like just those items we continued from the lack of the quorum last time so if there's um a critical mass of the affordable housing committee meeting i might ask you all to have a special joint meeting in the beginning of our session and then adjourn that and go to the regular planning commission meeting where i believe we'll have three items and two of the three i think are on consent so it might be a good chance to to um to do that and um i think it's a pretty straightforward strategy i hesitate to bring it up right now but if in fact we get direction from council to try to meet this deadline and if we succeed in landing this last planning for six, the potential of 61 units over the next eight years between um, 2015 and 2023 then the town will not have to address any arena quotas until the year 2023 stay tuned question quick question why why does the council need to direct staff to do something that we are just in a I'm, I'm confused why you need to get directed to move forward with updating the housing element I, I don't remember that before rather than just 
I know that I know that updating it is required by state law. I just don't understand. But because it's required by state law, don't you just aren't you just going to do it? I'm not sure why what the interim step of getting their direction or approval is. Well, it's direction because we want to go through the accelerated process. There's an option that you don't need to meet the May deadline, but what happens is then you're subjected to updating it in four years. But so, why not just try anyhow, and if you can't meet it, you can't meet it? And well, that's the recommendation, the staff to move forward, but we just want to make sure that council is on board with that because they could say, hypothetically could say, well, you know what, that'd be good, but we need to be prepared if the community has lots of questions that we're not going to be able to do this. So let's slow it down rather than pushing it forward. Let's slow it down, have the meetings, have more meetings, take our time with the knowledge that four years from now we'll have to uh, do this all again. So, and, and I assume you also have to get permission to sometimes spend money on contracts, which is, that, is, that would be is the part key of the deal. component. Um, <laughs> So on the traffic form, that it's getting permission to do a traffic form? Okay, because I do want to say that it was refreshing this morning when I saw an amazing number of volunteers um, out looking at traffic. <laughs> um, and all the way out to yeah. places that yeah. uh, uh, we, we know traffic comes from, including yeah. so let me explain the that. hill from Nicasio. Let so. me explain that. Um, a couple weeks ago, in the interest of vetting this idea with some learned professionals, Bruce Ackerman, Larry Kennings, and myself had lunch with um, David Parisi and a gentleman um, who's an old uh, traffic czar named Robert Anderson who lives in Tiburon. And David has actually done the same thing, it turns out, um, uh, as a one-man show for Tiburon and Mill Valley, sort of talking about background growth and you know the demographic changes and how it impacts circulation and, and whatnot. So they, they thought it was a very good idea. Um, that requires spending some money, so we love to get buy-in from the, um, the town council anytime we spend any sizable money, even though it's within our limits to do so. It's important not to get out in front of council. Having said that, David said at that lunch, it turns out that October is a very good time to collect data. School's back in session, um, and likewise, it's good to do it before daylight savings. And he offered up his forms that he's worked out on the protocol for doing this and he said you know if you wanted to do this before you actually get the go ahead on the entire traffic study you could do this with volunteers you could do it on a dime you know he'd limit his time and I and he actually offered up a staffer at a very reasonable price like $35 an hour who managed this thing today so we felt it was valuable to glean whatever data we could with this volunteer effort now even if we don't get licensed to do the full traffic forum because it's background data that informs us as we put together strategies and do our infill eventually. So we went ahead and did that and it's a challenging task. In fact, Renee and John, I think, had the greatest challenge at Sir Francis Drake and uh, Pastore and there's these forms and whatnot and they're concerned about how accurate it was but then David Hoffman, the staffer from Parisi's office, I think we'll be able to take that data and sort of do samples along the way. So if, even if there's a margin of error, they can still glean the trends. And it is interesting. They did put someone up in San Geronimo turnoff. And then we're and they were there all day. So you have some pretty strong volunteers. Well, I don't know. Who I mean, I don't know if they were all there all day, but they were there morning and evening. So Yes, we, so, it was uh, 7 same to 9 folks. in the morning and yeah. three to six in the afternoon. Yeah. So probably when you were coming and going I from work. Saw, um, I, I yeah. drove through a few checkpoints, I'll yeah. put it so Fairfax it, checkpoints, yeah. that's what we So it will be interesting, hit. and, and uh, it will be very interesting. Yeah, no, I, I, so I, I saw it happening and I appreciated that those folks were good, good. out there. Good, their, oh and hey, I might as well, in. since the hour is still young, uh, you know, I'm sitting on this technical advisory committee for the transit corridor study from Fairfax to um, San Rafael and the RFP went out during the summer and there was a selection process and Nelson Geingard in San Francisco was chosen, a top-notch firm and the, one of the principals of the firm, Bonnie Nelson, is actually the project manager. We had our kickoff meeting in, on Monday and um, you know this started as the trolley study for 100 grand and then TAM, Transportation Authority of Marin, decided that they wanted to sort of expand it into a transit study, not just um, metal wheel, but rubber wheel, and look at 
um, the existing conditions and how we might create um, a modal shift to, to transit um, to, frankly, you know, alleviate some of the car traffic for people that stay in their car but incentivize people to come over. So it, it's um, Diane Steinhauser's on the TAC herself. I mean, they're, they're the project manager. Katie Rice is on it. And um, it's probably one of the most important studies going on in Marin County right now. It's going to be very interesting. And the report should be due, or should be ready in about a year from now. And it's not going to be advising a preferred, alter, um, recommending a preferred alternative. It's going to be just looking at it from more of an ecological standpoint of the trade-offs. And, and, you know, if you do this, you do that, and this happens, and here are the options. Um, and then lastly, I'm also sitting on an advisory committee that Marin Transit's holding on school buses through, for all the schools in the county. Um, San, San Francisco, or what, Golden Gate Transit doesn't want to provide the bus service anymore. There's only six school districts out of 30, I think, that actually have yellow buses, but they want to go back to the, the um, drawing board over how they might better serve all the school districts in Marin County with yellow bus service. So that's going on, and the gentleman at Marin Transit that's managing that is also on our tack for the Marin Transit the corridor. So it's interesting, good stuff going on. And that's also why I rely so much on having a contract planner like LAK to help <laughs> with our limited staff. You know, we, it's so important, and I'm hoping everything goes well with that. So do we have any other comments or requests? Are we good? All right. Are we ready to wrap it up? Motion to adjourn. I heard none, but I will approve it anyways. Motion We're adjourned. To adjourn. All right. Thanks.